Interestingly, a lot of companies, traditional companies also, they have also started looking at these boomerang ads in a very different way. Gone are the days when people used to say, "Ek baar chhod ke gaye to chhod ke gaye." Hamen kya lena? That that doesn't happen. Hi Dheeraj, welcome to the Curious Tech Show. How are you doing? Hi Rana, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm doing great. How are things with you? All good, all good. Uh, Dheeraj, uh, we've we've known each other a while, right? We go back to Davin Boss, yeah. but uh, how I like to start off the show is people who are watching in who don't know who Dheeraj is. Uh, why don't you quickly just give a quick quick intro of who is Dheeraj and what is Dheeraj up to? Sure. So. Hi everyone my name is Dheeraj Arora I am the co-founder and CEO at boomranks.ai where our sole aim is to build the world's largest and the most impactful alumina network we started this company around 11 months ago and yes I'll be sharing uh, my journey about this company and probably before that as well eventually while going through the conversation great great uh, so like i said um, i think we we go back to I think ten years almost now mm-hmm. when we both were at Davin Box. Yeah. But uh, uh, and now you started your own company, right? I I, I always I always think like what's what's what what's the mindset, right? That you worked for so many years, or you're doing super well, and then what's the problem statement that you saw, right? What um, forced you, or rather, what compelled you, you know, to to go on this journey in in Boomerang? So we'll get to Boomerangs later, but I would love to uh, understand that for people listening in. What's the problem statement you saw that that you felt that you needed to start up? Okay, uh, see, so, you know, okay, before Boomerangs, I was working with Darwin Box. I worked there for close to four years, uh, and uh, I was part of the sales team there. And what I realized is that each and every RFP that used to come my way, everywhere there was requirement of an alumni module. Now. according to me alumina module is different from the alumina management system we are developing to a large extent but we are bear with me for some time uh, so everyone was asking for alumina module most of the existing clients were also asking for some kind of alumina engagement and uh, strangely no hcm company no hrms or hcm company the big company has so far invested in developing an alumina module leave the indian players aside you look at uh, most of the legacy players like sap oracle workday none of them has invested in developing this kind of module so it always kind of like intrigued me why so we and and we set out to do more research on alumina management some of the strange things which we come up was come up were like alumina management systems or the concept per se is extremely old i think the first alumina system was developed for microsoft back in 1995 right so the concept is that old while while if you see for the past over the past 15 or 20 years uh, the hr tech market has evolved considerably uh, the penetration of hr tech systems were i think somewhere around 5% globally they are now at like 30 35% globally the alumni systems could not breach i believe the 1% mark also they are their overall glo- uh, their overall penetration in the market globally has been less than 1% so we did a lot of research we came across three four different problems okay this is the reason why people are not getting the required benefits from those system and once we had the answers to those problems once we knew that our solutions kind of make sense and these are easily implementable as well that is when we thought okay fine let's leave the job and let's start the company interesting but why is that so you're right like uh, i think 10 years back or 9 odd years back when we started it was single digits right hr tech penetration now it's 35 i'm surprised i thought it's it's more than 50 uh, but what happened like why why hasn't alumni kept up uh, we'll get into benefits of alumni later right for everyone listening in but kya hua like why why didn't it really uh, penetrate with the hr okay. tech uh, providers See, alumni management system. Eh, if you see, one persona is an employer, another persona is an employee, right? So, uh, for these two persona, I will use the word like demand side and supply side, where alumni is the demand side and uh, employer is the supply side. Now, if you look at the demand side persona, that is alumni persona. Uh, again, I give you some interesting facts. Uh, 
LinkedIn must be having. LinkedIn has this concept of value microbes, right? And I, I'm taking its example because it's the largest professional social network, which is out there. They have lacks of employ. They have lacks of alumni groups, right? Hmm. Uh, and the surprising thing is, around ninety-five percent of these groups do not have any kind of employer involved. It just tells you that the demand side from alumni is so strong that without the employer getting involved, people are going to LinkedIn and creating some kind of alumni network and having some kind of discussion on networking, right? But any alumni system has to be set up by an employer. and that is where the constraints come one of the most uh, one of the first things probably and if you look at from india market and this is true globally as well people will ask hey uh, boss what is the return on investment first of all what is my investment and second is what is the return on investment and i think the traditional alumina management systems have not done justice to this problem statement so even if you look at other alumina statements uh, other alumina systems which are out there in the market and you simply go to their websites and try to learn what they solve for everyone will be talking about the intangible benefits where they talk about brand advocacy where they talk about the fact that these alumni can be a potential brand ambassadors and while the point is completely taken and it is one of the most important things and one of the most important asks but what is the real hard roi uh, that is what was missing from some of these platforms if you look at the platforms which are coming from the north america the usa primarily which is a more mature market than our market right uh, there at least people are now talking about the concept of boomerang hires which is becoming very popular so for my audience i want to tell boomerang hires are the people who leave the organization and they come back and join the same organization again right mm. so boomerang hires one of the benefits that organizations get out of it in terms of again hard roi is they don't have to spend money on the traditional recruitment channels right a boomerang hires if someone says hey i want to join the organization back it means the organization has not spent any money right so they save the recruitment cost in that way uh, again you will find it like uh, odd but this is happening in usa where there are certain global listed companies and uh, as part of their statements they say we had 20% boomerang hires this quarter we had 15% boomerang hires this quarter so this trend is kind of like catching up there oh, so people are encouraging that now people are encouraging that very 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 significantly see the way i look at this problem statement ranak is see uh, nowadays the people at 2022 especially in the tech enabled industries when they are joining right uh, they are bound to leave those organizations after a couple of years and in fact if you see That's the right. early attrition rate which we typically yeah. call like 3 to 6 months or maybe up to a year is traditionally high in all the industries no exceptions mm-hmm. right now what happens is people leave the organization they go and try their luck at another organizations they acquire new skills they build their career and after eventually working for 6 7 8 10 years in the industry they start realizing some of the intangible things as well for example like a work culture not everything is about money like work culture work life balance those kind of things start becoming important and that is when they realize hey, boss i have worked with four different organizations right now i have these kind of skills can i go back to this organization where i had like one of the best periods of my life mm-hmm. one of the best stints of my life and i can get probably the similar package as like as uh, as the other companies are paying me so this kind of thought process is coming to people they are uh, yearning to be boomerang hires and interestingly a lot of companies traditional companies also they have also started looking at this boomerang hires in a very different way gone are the days when people used to say ek baar chhod ke gaye to chhod ke gaye hame kya lena that that doesn't happen right so i i think this is like one thing which is fast catching up in the mature markets and then we have come up with the brand new concept which will give those that hard roi and i don't know whether i will be successful as an organization i will be successful or not but i tell you we are definitely going to create a new category the way people look at alumina management systems at least 2 years or 3 years down the line is going to get completely changed uh, especially because of the concepts that we have introduced in this market uh, the first one is we have introduced the concept of like a job referral alumina job referral uh, ranak you are in hr right you are heading an uh, organizations hr one of the best i'm sure you must be agreeing with me when i say one of the yeah, best yeah. sources of hires mm-hmm. is employee referrals 
right number one uh, i have That's seen organizations number one yeah cost effective the drop offs from employee referrals are also significantly low yeah. right yeah. because the skin of the employee is involved so we thought why not uh, apply the same thing on an alumni as well alumni base for a mature organization is significantly larger than an employee base right now you have seen organizations having around 25 to 40% of their overall hires as uh, employee referrals and that's a significant number so if we can add something like say 10 to 20% of alumni referrals the cost that the companies will save will be tremendous we did some internal calculations so we can say it can help save a company uh, save up to like 20% of their overall alumni cost and and where i am coming uh, where are these numbers coming from if you typically see uh, if you hire via traditional modes of hiring you end up paying somewhere between 10 to 20% of annual ctc right but if you go for referrals let's say alumni referrals the amount that you will be paying will be somewhere around 1 to 30% so add somewhere around 15% of the traditional hire switching to alumni referrals and you can calculate the savings that you will be having hmm. so, uh, so 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 this is one right. hmm. so you're right like um, uh, of course referrals is uh, is the number one like for us also we obviously like <clears throat> i think every company right you index on how do you do referrals how do you maximize referrals but yeah right you're right the problem is that like getting getting that word out uh, on referrals uh, is is always yeah. a challenge and and uh, people who but i i just want to sorry i just side track a little i want to come back to uh, you spoke of boomerang uh, boomerang hires is a new concept and honestly i have not heard of it in india to be honest uh, among at least the circles i run is this a very west thing it's not caught up in india or in your experience it's already there but only the very large companies are doing it okay i probably will give a slightly controversial answer uh every large organizations hr team chro is talking about boomerang hires right or at least you would have seen uh, uh they talk about uh, the people or especially the female employees who have left their organization because of pregnancy and now they want to come back right this is like a form of a boomerang hires but everyone talks about this the problem is the tools which are out there which can enable it or not and the same concept applies to referrals as well like if i am saying the word alumni referrals i didn't coin the word i didn't coin the concept the concept is already there but how do you do alumni referrals that's a problem right and alumni referrals also when i talk about it it's not very simple okay you post a job someone refers you and the referral is done no the point is why will someone refer you because you have to pay him money and very interesting thing which people do not realize and uh, of course we also didn't realize it unless we started developing the product and uh, saw the challenges an organization cannot pay money to an alumni to an alum directly like for example if you can pay money to an employee because you have already done the kyc of the employee right it is simply going into your uh, payroll that's correct but an alum he is not an employee so he is like a vendor to that organization right now if you have to make money or if you have to make a make payment to a vendor you have to register him as a vendor in your organization there are kyc related regulations from india point of view there are rbi related regulations there will be yearly audits right so all these challenges are there now let's say even a large organization which is let's say a 2000 employee organization the number of vendors they will be having probably will be less than 100 but your alumni base is let's say 5000 alumni and out of this even 1000 people over a period of 5 years give a successful referral so you will be adding like 1000 vendors to your existing base of 100 vendors and your finance team will be like boss this is not going to happen my audits my everything is going to get screwed up because of such huge number of vendors right and for every vendor that is getting added people have to pay additional cost for the system that they're using all those things come into picture so initially when we set out to solve the referral problems we were only looking at okay boss alumni can refer and you pay money to him outside the system that was our like initial thought process but when we understood the nuances of the business we thought hey boss we are solving an hr problem and we are trying to create a finance problem right so what we ended up doing is we have developed a platform in such a way that we become like a vendor to an organization 
So if, let's say, Ranak, I take your example, you have to pay 50,000 rupees to five alums for five successful referrals. That is 2.5 lakh rupees. So you don't pay 2.5 lakh rupees to them. You simply pay 2.5 lakh rupees to us. We divide it into 50,000 rupees each and we pay it to them. So And, and we, we charge some uh, around 10% convenience fee on top of that. So as part of this convenience fee, what we do is we verify the PAN number of the al alumni. Right. Everything is done online. He puts his uh, PAN card number and we verify it online. The name is returned to us. Then we ask him to share his bank account details. We drop one rupee to his bank account. The name is given back to us by the bank. We match the name which has come from the PAN card information and from the bank account and we verify whether it is the same. If it is the same, nothing like this, 100% match, successful. If, the, if it is a partial match, less than 85%, then the manual verification comes into picture. We ask for some more uh, data from that particular alumni. But anything above 85% match, the payment is processed instantly. We also deduct 10% TDS as part of the payout. We also uh, make sure that on the every quarter, the payment is released to the IT department. Form 26 years is updated. All those activities are completely done by us. So effectively saving significant bandwidth uh, from the organization and we are taking up that pains and that's why we are developing this platform. Understood. That's very interesting. Um, uh, yeah, you're removing that friction from the company side. Right? Companies just kind of yep. who have the intent, right? But they're like, there's so much friction. Yep. And for those listening in, we'll ask Dheeraj to open up his screen and share and talk of his product. Uh, but before we get to that, I'll just take a minute. Uh, so we've clearly established, right? The hiring part is is all, it's a friction problem, but we all know everyone in the HR world will welcome, right? That if alumni can refer nothing like it. Uh, so that's one very large use case of like the alumni. Uh, in your experience, and maybe it's getting a little theoretical here, but what are the other benefits, right? For let's say, a, uh, and I'm talking uh, an HR listening in, HR head of a company, thousand or eight hundred to thousand right that's where you are you're you're at good scale right if you're eight hundred thousand you have a huge number of alums for them or him or her listening in what are the benefits overall holistically what are all the benefits that having a very strong tech enabled alumni platform will give them we've already established about hiring uh what what others so let's let's talk about from an employer point of view first one is definitely the concept of referral, then the concept of boomerang hires. We talked about both of these mm -hmm. things. The second is the concept of brand advocacy. Uh, this is also, I, I feel, where the Indian market is lagging, but the US is like US has done well when it comes to like brand advocacy. Now you look at it this way. Uh, sorry, I will be like, I'll give a slightly long answer to this point of brand advocacy sure, sure, because sure. this is very important, right? A lot of companies realize the fact that when an employee is going to leave your organization, leaves your organization rather, he's either going to champion your organization or critique your organization. You can't stop it. He's going to talk to other people yeah. about your organization, right? You can't stop it. Uh, but if you engage that alum well, somehow make it feel like a uh, part of the family, right why an alumina management system of course that's the only solution right now we are having or maybe if, if there are other means available there is a greater likelihood that he will talk positive about your organization right it's all the it's all the questions of probabilities and likelihoods nothing else so if you engage an alum well over a period of three four five six years can that alum become like your brand ambassador and that is another problem statement which uh, alumina management systems solve and how do you get benefits of these kind of things Look at it this way, your company launches a new product, right? You have, let's say, a 2000 employee company. So which are the typical people who go to LinkedIn or who go to Facebook and start resharing or liking your post and putting in comments? These are 90% of the times these are your employees. Hardly you will see your customers and all they are talking about this or liking it so much, right? It doesn't happen. Let's be practical. These are your employees, right? Now your alumni base is larger than them. So if your alumni is engaged well, right? They will amplify your they, they will amplify your voice on the social media, and that's the benefit that you are getting over a period of time. It's difficult to quantify, but that's the another major use case that is getting solved. Right, so that is uh, one thing which we solve. Uh, the yeah, it's, it it can it can turn into a revenue. In fact, there is one research which states uh, yeah. an alumni recommendation is considered five x more valuable than a customer recommendation. 
राइट एक एल के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से सोचो वो आपकी कंपनी छोड़ के चला गया स्टिल ही इज टॉकिंग वेल अबाउट योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वट इज द रीजन राइट कस्टमर तो फिर ठीक है ही इज योर कस्टमर तो ही विल टॉक वेल अबाउट योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो दिस इज दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड थर्ड एंड द थर्ड थिंग विच इज ऑल्सो अगेन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एटलीस्ट फॉर लार्जर कंपनीज इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रिमूविंग फ्रिक्शन वेन इट कम्स टू कम्युनिकेशन बिटवीन अ कंपनी एंड द एल्यूमिनाई सिंपल बहुत सारी हमारी नॉर्मल रिक्वायरमेंट्स होती है बींग एल्यूमिनाई आर फॉर्म सिक्सटीन हैव टू कम आफ्टर अ पीरियड ऑफ ऑलमोस्ट अ ईयर देर आर एफ एन एफ स्पेंडिंग देर आर सम अदर काइंड ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट डॉक्यूमेंट्स विच आर रिक्वायर्ड बाई यू एंड यू डोट नो वट टू डू यू स्टार्ट सेंडिंग ई मेल्स टू द पीपल यू नो द फोन नंबर ऑफ द एच आर यू स्टार्ट कॉलिंग दैम एंड द एंटायर एक्सपीरियंस गोज रियली बैड इवन दो एवरी वन इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज वर्किंग हार्ड टू रिजॉल्व यूर क्वेरीज बट अ स्लाइट डिले और मिस कम्युनिकेशन द डिले इज ऑल्सो लार्जली अ फंक्शन ऑफ मिस कम्युनिकेशन मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स right and what happens is the impact of that is someone is going to uh, uh, glass door or M- or ambition box and saying uh, hey boss mera 3 mahine se pay slip nahi aaya i have been following up with them it's really bad experience mm. this is what people do mm. right yeah. and most of the times people on glass door are the people who like talk negatively about your organization right uh, i i i share an anecdote here ranak Uh, i was having a demo with one organization in the bfsi space which was more than uh, 10000 employees uh, a very well known a very large name right and uh, i just went to their glass door before the demo of my product and i saw their rating is like 3.4 3.5 and the rating is given by only 391 people that's it their employee base is 10000 their alumni base is 30000 There were over forty thousand employees of the company, employees slash ex employees. Only three ninety one people rated. And that's not that's not the number which any organization will want. They will want at least ten percent of the base should be there, right? But people will talk about hey, this company's uh, glass door rating is three point six. It is bad. People shouldn't join and all those things, right? So how do you avoid those things? Again, engage people, and that is again where the use of alumni systems come in, and solving all those. small small queries is also very important as part of that trigger hmm. got it here this was interesting now i think uh, we've discussed theory but the entire point of the show is uh, hmm. to give people listening in a quick glimpse on the practical the practical college mein hota tha the actual product right uh, so dheera ji if, ah. if if you have it in handy would actually love to see the product and how you're solving all these problems is and uh, problems and and while you are talking like we can even address some of the problems and questions that come up sure definitely but right, i'm going to share my screen mm-hmm. i am new to the platform so please help me i'm going to share my entire screen mm, yes i can see your whole screen is my screen visible now yes 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 okay this screen is visible perfect yeah so run when i show the demo of my product i am going to talk about two personas one persona is going to be an alumni persona another persona is going to be a employer persona and it will will talk about how the engagement is happening and uh, what are the usps of our product as well and i will also talk about what were the problems and how we are solving it perfect right so the screen which is right now you all people are seeing this is like the employee persona once an alum logs in he always logs in using his personal email id which is in the records of the corporates and his password so once he logs in he is welcomed with the landing page this is one example of a landing page okay the landing page is completely completely customizable as per the employer requirement their branding their logo their colors their content everything as per their requirement while you saw this one landing page i will show you another landing page as well this is like a figma image but this is what we developed for one of our clients if you see this mm yeah you can you can have your youtube uh, video links uh, embedded here okay. uh, you can have like your social feeds news feeds all those things everything can be part of this so this is like another example like right? so once so after this the most important uh, thing for any lm is something called an echo module echo is basically that is where the most of the engagement happens right any the company if it wants to share the happenings within the organization wants to share some images videos newsletters everything happens by like this uh, i i will say we have taken inspiration from linkedin to uh, make this particular kind of page so if you see you can the company can come here and share the happenings within the organization 
whatever they are sharing on linkedin the exact same things can be shared on this particular platform as well now the employees can come employees can talk about employees can like your uh, post they can comment on top of this right they can tag other people in the post and they can talk to each other as well so it's like a common wall uh, with a company as well as the alumni again something very similar to linkedin right if they also want to share something they can come and talk about it here as well we have also enabled a, a brief concept of polls as well if someone wants to share a poll they want to uh, maybe a poll on the platform as well whether it is providing you the usage that you want it or not all these polls can also be shared on the platform moving on i am going to show you the documents module this is where all the documents which are shared by your uh, corporate or by your uh, employer those all those documents will be available here right now the interesting thing that i want to solve here is uh, when i when i talk about these things is uh, look at from and while we talked a lot about what are the problems we are solving for the employers we didn't talk a lot about what are the problems we are trying to solve for the alumni right the end user on the platform if you remember from my conversation i already established that there is a significant demand from the alumni to be on alumni network by giving the example of linkedin where i said 95% of the alumni groups are completely managed by the alumni right and the number overall number is also very high now what is the problem with now the problem major problem that comes is i as an alum on an average will be the alum of five to six different organizations right this number is true for any employee out there now if all this five six different organizations give me one single platform one give me one platform to log in i am not going to remember the url of each and every single platform i am not going to log in into each and every platform right that is humanly that is humanly not possible right and that is where most of the drop offs happen so there are many organizations believe me who do great job at engaging the alumni but people simply do not log in koi bhi itna pain nahi lena chahta so what and and everyone logs in probably using his personal email id so what we have done on boomerang's platform is if there are let's say five companies company a b c d e all of these five companies are using boomerang's platform and there is one person who has worked with all these five companies he just has to log in log in once to app.boomerang.ai that's it and all his different companies will be available under this just one drop down sorry i i don't have anything to show here but if you click here on this one like say the boom group it will show you the names of all your previous employers who are using the boomerangs platform and you simply click on the other per other company name right and your entire persona is switched to that company now from a user point of view look at it this way i work for five companies i log in once i just select my company name and all the documents corresponding to those five companies are available here i don't need the google's drives and one drives and manage them or look into my emails where are all this data everything is just under available under one login so that is the problem statement we are trying to solve from an alum point of view mm -hmm. uh moving further any kind of faqs which are being hosted by the employer all those things will be available this is a very small feature nonetheless an important one uh one of the most important ones is the concept of tickets this is very important anyone has any kind of grievance they can come here talk about their problem give it in description they want to upload any kind of document they can come and upload it here and select the relevant category and sub category uh, please note the category and sub category are defined by the employers as per their requirement once the ticket is raised uh, let me show you how the persona looks like this is how it looks like uh, we personally have tried to keep the ui for tickets persona in a conversational style while it is not exactly a conversation it goes like someone raises a ticket a mail goes to someone then he answers as per the tag but the overall persona is very conversational we feel this is where people uh, feel like more comfortable and that is where some of the best outcomes can happen hmm. and once the ticket is closed they will be able to give the feedback on the tickets they are able to track sls all those things are available here and uh, right. again and one of the most uh, important thing is integrated so this is integrated so someone from the employee side is answering these tickets right through their email or whatever that's yes or they are logging in on the platform and doing it 
they they are primarily logging in while we do a lot of integrations which i will talk about in a while uh, tickets integration is something which we do not do at the moment uh, we are also not very keen on doing that uh, because i believe the employee persona and the alumni persona is very are very different when it comes to tickets so if you combine them into one the maintenance of that becomes very problematic so you will be creating more problems for you rather than solving this uh so one of the my main personal uh, pain points i've seen is esops right that and this is personally i want to ask what happened to my esop letter where is my esop letter right and uh, of course i have to know email uh that's a big one right i'm i'm sure uh, that's that's a big problem that a lot of people are facing how are you addressing that yeah again see two things let let me take an example of a large company let's say the flipkart kind of companies where very large alumni and probably every person who has moved out of flipkart has some kind of esops with them yeah. and let's say when the company goes public right now if you look at esops these are mostly all options those options have to be converted into shares and those shares have to be allocated and there is a long process now for a company like flipkart resolving this, i don't know if they are using any alumni management system or not for the conversation let's assume they are not using it right now they will have to reach out to their all their alumni they will have to tell them do this 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 kind of steps some kind of kyc have to be done they will be sending emails to people or they will specifically will have to create a new web page host it on their website these are the only two solutions which are coming into mind or they can use alumni management kind of products where they can specifically give the entire information in the faq sections by creating a new category called esops telling people how to do and then they can tell people that still if there is any kind of thing that they want they have any kind of grievance not clear then they can come and raise a ticket and internally within the flipkart team these tickets can be routed specifically to those finance people and they can look at that finance and the compliance people because esops going public it's all a very big thing right they don't want any mistakes to happen so this is where these kind of platforms can do justice and and it's very important for these companies also uh, to invest in alumina management systems as early as possible because it's not like you start your alumina management system today and after one month everyone will be on the platform it simply doesn't happen overall engagement people coming to the platform joining it all takes a lot of time hmm got it now i had personally seen uh, this one when reliance bought over urban ladder Uh, uh, when you are acquiring a company, you need the sign off of each and every one who is part of who has ESOPs. So they used to do it completely offline. They sent mails and then had a huge team following up and checking. I I I know the backstory, so I can imagine the pain they went through. But I can see a clear use yep. case here, right? You do this completely here. You can track it very simply. Now they happen once yep. in a lifetime, but in that once in a lifetime, there's so much pain that happens. Uh, cool uh, uh please carry on dilaj there is by the way one uh, more use case i want to talk about because this is happening unfortunately a lot nowadays which is the concept of layoffs uh, now layoffs when typically happen once a person is laid off he is not allowed to come office from the next day onwards right there are so many questions in his mind and and that is where a lot of negativity starts flowing in right log ek dusre ko whatsapp pe message kar rahe hai pinging them asking them what is going on we have no clarity mm. but if you have a system like this even all those laid off employees are part of the system the next day onwards again you can uh, resolve a lot of their queries via faq specifically for them if there are any kind of doubt they can again come and raise a ticket right uh the previous documents whatever documents you have to share those can be shared off we are also developing this concept of sign off on the system along with the digital signature we are in the process of developing that those sign offs can also happen here so that's also another use case which we solve and i know any company which has done layoff it's all it always was like a manual process uske baad sab kuch email ke upar ho raha and for the one week people are like very disturbed again this can probably bring down the impact to some extent that's all i hope for yeah and uh, <clears throat> very unfortunately having been part of that process uh, it is uh, the the 80 20 of this is purely from the other side they are uh, look you you literally deactivated my email instantly right yep. after the conversation they look like, yep. what happens to my pay slips what happens to my letters what happens to my experience letters right what happens to all the uh, letters the promotion letters pretty much all of those things uh all 100% of the queries where i need everything from you 
uh, don't just yeah. say you'll give me yeah. the last 12 months because I need my entire history. Uh, it was very, very painful. Uh, very, very painful. So, yeah. uh, unfortunate, but uh, uh, I can see a clear use case on this. Uh, not not sure if, if you can yeah. promote that. <laughs> but, I, I know, uh, I know. Uh, it, it is a problem. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Then I'm coming to the referrals. I, I think this is going to be one of the most important things, uh, both from an employer as well as alumni side. Uh, because this is where the alumni can actually make money. And once someone is making money on the platform, I, I don't think there is any other engagement which can be termed better than this. You're making money, you're bound to come back to this platform, right? So now here as an alum, when I logged in, I'm able to see the referrals there. So I see all the active jobs within my company, which is called the Boom Group. I'm seeing they have opened something like for software developer. If I refer someone as per the conditions they have mentioned on successful referral, I will get 15,000 rupees, right? Similarly, if the company is present across multiple geographies, let's say they are based out of London, for London entity, they are offering a reward of 1,000 pounds. So I can either look for, so if I am a software developer, my network also largely will be within the software developer. So I can come and look for all the Correct. jobs which are within this kind of space, right? So I can look, uh, here it is only one. I can look for the locations, I can search Mumbai wise, Bangalore wise, New York wise, recency wise, experience level wise, right? So someone tells me, hey, can you refer me? So I can go and put all these filters because I know the other person <coughs> and look for the look for the relevant jobs, right? Now I see here, either so, I can Dheeraj, refer... Uh, Dheeraj, sorry, one question here. Uh, yes. So this is company wise or is there like an all companies also? As because when I'm coming in, I... I, I don't mind seeing all the jobs of all the companies that I've been a part of. Right now, it is all company-wise. If you want to see for the other right. company, just go and switch to a different persona. Achha, got it. Okay. Right now, it, it doesn't make sense for us to combine the data. Again, as per a lot of GDPR regulations, the company's data, we want to keep it different. Uh, but I, I don't believe there is a lot of friction. Just click here and go to other company. Hmm. Got it, got it. The privacy is a problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, carry on. So now if you want to refer someone, simply come here, upload the CV. We only ask for four mandatory information, first name, last name, email ID, phone number, LinkedIn URL is up to you and just select your relationship with the referee, right? And go ahead and submit the referral. This is one way of doing that. But again, the problem is I always do not have access to someone else's CV. I don't want to type in his personal email ID and phone number and all those kind of things, right? That's also one friction point. So you can simply click on share, copy a link and cop and share this link with the third person. So for example, if I'm opening now in incognito, I simply put this link. Now I'm, let's assume the third person, I got this link. So I, the third person and able to go through the entire job brief, right? And I can apply myself here. So I click on apply here. I will be uploading my CV, my details, relationship with the referent. And if you see the referent name is by default there. I, I created this account for you, Ranak. <laughs> Right. So, the, <laughs> so the referral name is also there. So whosoever applies using this link, Ranak will get the referral benefit. Right now, the interesting thing is once the referral is applied for, everything goes under my referrals. So I can track, hey, I uh, referred Ayushi Aroda, either myself or she applied using the link. I referred this person, Rohit Lal. On what date did I refer? For what particular job did I refer? Is the job still open? What is my reward amount? And what is the hiring stage? What is the hiring status? For example, whenever the employer changes in their system that, hey, we shortlisted this person, we are moving him to the interview stage, our system will also capture that. So we will be doing those kind of integrations. And I will, I will, I'll be showing you this live also in the employer persona. But as a referrer, you will al always be aware of the hiring status of your referee. So this is one thing which we wanted to do here. Where are you, where are you getting the hiring status from? It's two things. Either the employer will update it on our system in his persona, or if we do an integration with the, their recruitment management system or ATS, let them make changes to the ATS. Everything will automatically get updated here. Oh, okay. okay. Huh. So you have the integrations and which, uh, which platforms are you supporting currently? integrations.
So right now we are doing custom integrations. Any platform which you will ask, we will do the integration. We are in the process of doing integration okay. of one particular platform. I don't want to take names here right now, but this is completely custom. We are not saying to any ATS platform right now. Achha, got it. So you have your APIs and whoever is a open API. Yes. Okay. Okay. And being a young company, we okay. are open to develop new APIs, make changes to our API. So right now we are not saying no to any integration with any ATS, as long as that ATS has open APIs available. ATS is important. Yeah. Good. good. <laughs> I, I see known names here, but okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> got it. <laughs> So, and once your referrals are successful, it shows that they have been hired and companies can set up a 45 days from the date of joining, they will be releasing the money and all you will, you will get a new tab here. Sorry, I can't show you right now, but you will get a new tab here called my payouts mm -hmm. where you can claim, click on claim and you can enter your PAN card number, bank account details. We verify the KYC within five seconds and then we release the payment to you. And then we go back to the employer and ask them for the money. Mm -hmm. Got right. It. So that's and, uh, one thing which will be done. Uh, here. Sorry. One question. Uh, last in, in your last page, there was there was something on GBP, right? It was like an international position. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how does this work for let's let's say an employee is currently abroad, or let's say this is somebody mm. who's not Indian. Mm. Uh, how does that does that still work? Because it's not a pan card. So you're basically taking any documents, any their government, whatever the government doc is, or is it only pan you're taking? Okay. Let me answer this uh, in from India point of view with an Indian employee, non-Indian employee and non-Indian entity. Let's say, so this currency is always a function of the entity where it is incorporated. Okay. So if it's an Indian company, they will be making the payout in rupee, right? That is what their preference will be. If it's a UK company, they will be making the payout in pounds. Now, let's say uh, I am an Indian person. I successfully referred for this and this 15,000 rupees have to be given to me. If I put my PAN card details, because I will be having, I, I we will deduct 10% TDS and re send the remaining payment your way. If I do not have the PAN card, being an Indian uh, national, or I do not have PAN card because I am not an Indian national, like both the con both the things are possible. In that case, we deduct something like 20.8% from the overall amount and send the remaining amount to you. That is as per the law from India. If the PAN card is not there because either the person doesn't have it or he is a non-Indian, then we detect 20.8%, which mm -hmm. is basically 20% TDS plus 4% mm -hmm. says that is 20.8%. Similarly, when it comes to other geographies, right now uh, we are in this process of still developing it because honestly, we don't have any person from outside the geography. Uh, it will take something like six to seven months. But at that time, we will be making payments as per the local laws and regulations. Uh, we have already studied the model of uh, how does Twitter makes the payout for their monetization? How does YouTube does the payout? And we are in the process of developing that right now. Hmm. Got it. Got it. So give me a break for one minute. I have to put it on charging. Now, I want to show you one very interesting thing. A lot of people love it. Now, if I go and click on my profile, this is how my profile will look like once I log in for the first time, right? The name is coming from your sign up page, your email ID is coming, the mobile number you have updated probably during your sign up. Rest, nothing else is coming here, right? And while you can update your work experience, you can update your education details, we know people are not going to do it, right? So, what we have developed here is we have developed a LinkedIn integration. So just come here and put your profile URL here. I've already put in your URL, Ranak, mm -hmm. right? Now just put your public URL and click on this sync button and see the magic. It will take up to five to 10 seconds, maybe. See this? Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, your photo has come. Your, this is completely your educational history, right? I don't think we missed anything. Mm -hmm. Your about me has yeah. come your work experience has come. Now, from data privacy point of view, we are only fetching that data that you have made publicly available. So there are certain cases, let's say, where your photo is not publicly available on LinkedIn. While you have update, uploaded, but it is not visible to people outside your network, right? In those, in those scenarios, your photo will not come. So we are taking care of all the data, privacy, regulations, everything. 
right? Now, if you see here, you work for Boom Drive Digital Solutions from this date to this date. This will always be there because this information has been uploaded by your company. And, and we show it with the tick because this is like a verified information. The rest of the things have come from LinkedIn. You can go ahead and add it or delete whatever changes you want to do because those are like your declarations. We, we eventually, per se, as a company, we want to reach maybe after another five years or so, where at least 40 to 50% of the information on everyone's page is like a verified information. That is what is our internal target. Mm. So there's, there's like a very clear use case for BGVs here, right? Okay, once that is there, you don't really need to do a background check. Yeah. And, and see, look at this another thing also. Let's say you are a part of a very large company, a TCS or a Wipro or Infosys kind of organization where there are, there are lakhs of people and you don't know everyone else. Now you want to reach out to a Wipro alum or something like this. You do not even know whether like how many Wipro alums are there on LinkedIn. I don't know if you have done like LinkedIn search or not. If you're a normal user, just look for like people who are part of Wipro. It will tell you there are five like people. Okay, but it will show you the data of only 1000 people, the first 1000 people, mm -hmm. like it doesn't solve for anything. So what you do is you go log in into a Wipro Illumina network, a platform which is provided by them will do some research and all you will come across with certain profiles. Now there the problem is you do not know what they are presently doing. Like you have no idea because no one updates their uh, where they are working, where they have worked on the platforms because no one has this kind of LinkedIn integration. Then you will be taking some names and you will go, then you will be going back to LinkedIn, we'll be searching them and see whether they fit your criteria or not. And how we do things at uh, Boomerangs is, look at this one. Uh, you click on search Illumina. By the way, this is like an image. This module is going live uh, by 30th of June. You click on search Illumina. It shows you the list of all the Illumina within your network. And, and by the way, here it is a common Illumina network. So if you're part of three organizations, this page is common similar to what you asked for earlier, like for reference, but this page here is common because this is a user data. This is not technically an employee data. So that's why we could make it common. Mm -hmm. Now come here, search either by a name, email ID, or if you want to say people who are presently working in these organizations, let's say IBM or some something, show me all those people. Then it shows you all those relevant people. So you can put by organizations, educational institute wise, years of experience wise, all these filters you can put. And now click on this view profile. So you are able to view the entire profile. And this is with the assumption that people will be updating their profile using LinkedIn integration because it's easy. But this is how you are able to view the entire profile. Now it makes more sense, right? Now this entire process you can't do on LinkedIn. You can't do on other Illumina management platform. This only you can do it on Boomerangs. So this is our second USP, a major one. Yeah. Now. If you want to talk to this LM, you can click on send a message and you can reach out to this LM and have the conversation. Now, whenever you are having conversation by an Illumina network solution, the credibility is completely different, right? You know, the person is definitely a part of Illumina network. Someone randomly reaches out to me on LinkedIn, even though he's my LM or not, I, I don't know whether he's my LM or not. There is no credibility on LinkedIn per se, right? That's always a problem. Hmm. So we are, we are trying to give the best of like uh, traditional Illumina management system and to the other extreme LinkedIn, which is a large professional network, trying to give you the best of both the worlds. Got it. Yeah. So Got it. this yeah. is, uh, this is what I largely wanted to share from uh, the Illumina side. Any, any questions happy to answer. Uh, not, not with the product. Uh, uh, I think uh, is is there anything else you want to you want to show our show our listeners? Yeah, I want to show you the employer side of the persona. Uh, I, I think people are going to love that. Left with that, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let me know if my screen is most visible here. Yeah. Listening in, Viraj. Yeah. yeah, because most of the people listening in will be people who are in HR, right? People yeah. who are either part of teams or leading teams. Uh, yeah. Uh, they were very curious to see how things work out for them. Yeah, very interesting. And I, I'll show you some very, very interesting things, especially good use case for HR leaders, the kind of analytics and the data they have been looking for, and they are not getting it from anywhere. So let me let me start with, you can see my screen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, perfect. So 
we thought if we are developing this system and if we are taking your alumni data which is your exit employees why not also build the attrition analytics for you because we wanted it to become like a single source of truth whenever it came to alumni data right that was that is what we wanted to do so if you see here all your different legal entities within one particular group are available here so you can put your time filter and say show me the attrition analytics for like for the entire time period so it tells you you have 130 alumni it is divided gender wise right it is divided status wise status wise is how many accounts have you activated how many have you not activated show me the attrition department wise show me the attrition bu wise right your attrition by tenure exit type regrettable non regrettable attrition count by reason job roles all the standard all the standard attrition analytics that you need all this data you can download in the form of an image or download the raw data in the form of csv as well or increase the size of this if you want to take a screenshot or something all those things can be done here on this platform as a very small use case it is not something which is like you are solving a big problem no but the idea of developing this was because we wanted it to be a single source of truth that's all now uh, let me take you this alumni directory i think this is where your uh, where the employers will be spending the most uh, of their time there is, there yes one sec uh, uh, one sec can you just go back to the insights i will yes um, there is one again i'm just uh, uh, just just this just came to my mind there is one very strong use case that uh, and i'm taking the the hat of of uh, mostly a, an hr leader uh one big problem that every one of us faces uh, see we get attrition right we uh, i mean i can always crunch excel and find this also mm. what we cannot solve for is where our people are going yes. where they are joining yes they're joining competition what company they are joining is that something you're doing or you have in build because that's a massive use case yes. i personally am trying to solve that my linkedin mein jaake i'm checking one by one do you have yeah. that already built in Yes, absolutely, and that is where the whole concept of yeah LinkedIn integration comes into picture. So I, that is also solved under our Alumina directory, right? So this Alumina directory does a lot of things for you, right? So this is where it shows you your overall Alumina. Let's say it is showing three hundred seventeen people are there across multiple legal entities. There are five legal entities under this group. let's say you want to look for people who have spent let's say 0 to 4 0 to 4 years in your organization okay and you want to look for people who left you at least 3 years ago in fact this last exited filter also i have not seen in a lot of hrms as well who left you let's say 3 years ago it tells you there are 61 people now where are linkedin integration comes into picture you see this this is show me alumni who are presently working in this company or who have previously worked in this company or who have been passed out of a certain educational institute for example i want to say here show me the chartered accountants so i just type and it shows me this one right and i click on search it shows me that this guy is there it has one the less number of employees here so it shows me this one particular result So now, when I open this page, this entire member details is basically the data which I, as an employer, uploaded for this particular employee or alum, right? Now I want to see what did he fill in his LinkedIn profile. Just click on View Public Profile, and it opens up that same page. You see this? This guy is passed out of mm -hmm. Indian Institute of Chartered Accountants, right? You want to see something for? Uh, let me reset all the filters. and say you want to look for people who work in startups or who have previously worked in startups so i am not putting a company name i am just using a tag called startups the tags can be banking startups bfsi pharma those kind of things right any number of tags b2b saas by the way you cannot do all this kind of search in linkedin right you cannot use the word b2b you cannot use the word saas this is not how it works if if i am not wrong shadi.com on linkedin is registered as like a computer software or i don't know internet company or something which doesn't do justice to that company because they have a very narrow concept of industry and sub industry uh, we came up this concept of tags mm. and in the back end we keep on maintaining tags for each and every company after doing the thorough research so now you let's say you are looking for people who work in startups so these are the five people who have worked in startups so this is your profile which we created if i click on this view public profile your startup is coming at least i know it is coming one for the this darwin box i know i've set it up in the system for startup but you have worked in a lot of startups any which ways 
right? So they know these are the people who worked in these startups. Mm. Now, this is like a search which you can do as per the filters whenever required. Uh, very soon, we are, anyways have all the data. Very soon, we are making changes to our landing page and we will be showing you what percentage of your people work in what companies. I have one image with me. If you allow me, I will show you that image right now. Be sorry, because our design is finalized there. Let me show you that thing. Yes. So this is what we will be showing you in another one month on your landing pages. Your top, let's say 50% of your employees are in this company, 10% of people are in this company. And of course, it is all a function of how many people are syncing their LinkedIn profile. Right. And again, once if, we... if done correctly, this is this is super powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you cannot get this from LinkedIn. We, we try to figure out a lot of ways we can't. <laughs> Even after paying money to LinkedIn, you can't get this data. Manually. No, not even. What are doing. It is not even manually possible. Uh, I probably I am side tracking, but I can show you one interesting thing if, if your audience is willing to see this. Let's say I'm a normal user. I'm going into search page. Okay. Hmm. And I say I want to look for all the people and uh, show me people who have previously worked in i'm taking example of flipkart because it has a large number of alumni okay i say flipkart let's see how many results does it give it says 42000 people can i see all 42000 people i cannot why because if you see there are only 10 results shown in one single page and i can go only till 100 so i can see only 1000 results out of 42,000, there is no way I can breach the thousand mark. The if if I am a LinkedIn navigator user, I can go to 2,500 users. That's it. So even after paying money, you can't get the data of all this 42,000 people. So when you are saying Ranak, you will do manually. You can't do manually because it is not letting you go beyond this hundred number. So, but no, no, what, in our in our system, you can do this. Manual was uh, we used to. Uh, what I meant by manual was I type the name of the person, yeah. go and check when yeah. they're working, and type it on a piece of paper. I mean that I can do because I think the number is small at this point. But yeah. scale, like this is not possible. Yeah, yeah. So this is like a very very powerful data which we share with people. I want to show you one more thing. This is again important. So. This, this, like you open one person's profile as an employer, you are able to view each and everything here. What are the member details? Good future hire, yes or no. You can activate, deactivate it as per your requirement. The documents which you have shared with that particular person. Any tickets raised by Ranak here. Any referrals which are being shared by Ranak. Everything that Ranak is doing in the platform, everything will be available here. In the future, you will see another uh, column here called posts. So any post that you do on Echo module, that will also be visible here. Uh, moving further, uh, the document section. So this is where you can come and upload documents in bulk. Uh, again, you can do it legal entity wise, all those things you can do. Uh, this is like your drive. You come and create folders, subfolders, move files from one system to another. All those things that you do very similar to how you do it in a Google Drive, right? Uh, additional thing that we do is we give you some kind of analytics here. Uh, for example, it tells you. You have used this much of memory. You have 10 folders. You have overall uploaded 20 files. So these can be like KPIs for HR ops team. Right? Uh, you can search for any data here. Uh, if you have uploaded a data, you have uh, shared it with, let's say, a wrong person by mistake, whatever. So you simply come here, click on edit, and enter the new employee ID. Let me just copy this employee ID. And I put it here. So it tells you hey, this is the user Naveen Kumar. This is his email ID. That's it. Now you click on share. So the document is removed from the previous email ID and it is shared with the new email ID. That's it. Understood. Okay. And, and mistakes are bound to happen. We just wanted to develop a system in such a way that it doesn't become a big thing. Reverse this process, reverse that process. We don't want that. Uh, 
then there is this FAQ section. Uh, while it's it's a it's one of the most basic things, but you can drag and drop in what order you want to share your FAQs to the other person. Uh, what are the different categories that you want to have? What are the different icons you want to use for category? When a person opens FAQs, it is all expanded by default or it is all closed by default. Now, these are all very minor, basic things, but we wanted to give like good experience to people. So we took extra pain to develop this. You you preview how the FAQs will look like to your people right here. Like your published FAQs. If I change it to, let's say, something like this, expand all fields by default. And then I go to preview. Now everything is expanded here, see this. So minor, minor things, but took extra pain for to drive good user behavior. Mm -hmm. Then this is the job section. Now this is important. I know you asked me a lot of questions about jobs earlier as well during the Illumina persona. So first of all, we have a concept of a recruiter, super recruiter, all the rules and permissions which are required in an ATS system. All those rules and permissions are available in our system as well. So now if you want to post a job, just go to post new job, select your relevant legal entity, put your job title and, and this I'm showing you without integration. Put your job title, your total positions, let's say you have three positions, work experience, and this is where you put your reward. And the relevant currencies which you put in your configuration, those will also come here. Uh, we have done a Google integration here. So you want to post this job for Chennai, just click on Chennai. So it will show you the relevant results. Put your uh, skills which you want, right? Put your job description and then publish the job. Simple. Once the job is published, right? So I, I've shown you here on the user side, how does the job look? This is how the job will look like once it is published. Now coming back to the employer persona, once the job is published, you are able to see there have been like five CVs in the screening stage. So the entire job is divided into four categories by default in our platform. Screening stage, interview stage, offered stage and hired stage. So whatever, whenever any CV comes, it comes under the screening stage. So you can view all the CVs within this. You can go to next applicant. You want to view the CV, just click on download and view the CV right from here. Any other details which have been filled in the form, those things will be available here. You can see if you if you like the CV, you want to shortlist this person, just click on shortlist it. The status is changed. Remember, Ranik, you asked this question how the status is getting changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. You like this person, you want him to move to the interview stage, just click on in progress in the interview stage. Now the person has moved to the interview stage. So this is how things happen here. Right? If you see Rohit Lal, he has moved to the interview stage. Uh, uh, Dheeraj, sorry, one, one question here. Uh, when you publish the job, it gets published to everyone or can you pick and choose i want it only to go to certain set of people right now it gets published to everyone uh, the question that have been asked by people or the requirement that have come is can we publish it only to people who have been marked as good future hires and that's very much possible mm, uh, yeah, yeah but if if you want us to do it as per your different departments and be used I think that becomes unnecessarily complex. We will anyways can develop these rules for you that people who have been marked as like they left you on bad terms, their CVs can be ignored. All those configurations are possible. So there is no point you taking the pains of selecting these set of people should get this job referral opportunity. It's, that is not required. Hmm. No, another, uh, uh, I'll tell you what, what I had in mind. Uh, again, it's a, it's not a very happy scenario. You had to, let's say, let go of one entire team, but after a month, things, which is happening, right? You let go of entire teams and after a couple of months, you're like, shit, I have to rehire the whole team again because things are better now, right? Uh, and then that team sees all of this. Uh, this gives a very, it's happened, right? You know the news I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. People come and say, hey, we were all let go and now you're hiring that team. So again, I think the use case, the, the, the solution is what you said. Uh, they should not be yeah. marked as good hires or yeah. something till a certain point. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Hmm. This is one thing. Then moving to ticket section. While tickets is very similar to what I showed you on Persona, but from analytics point of view, you can view all the tickets where the SLA breaches have happened. You want to view tickets by specific admins, by category, you can view it. Uh, one interesting use case that we solve here is, for example, uh, someone has raised a ticket in a category which is wrong. Right, so the admin can go ahead and reassign this to the correct category. For example, this has been assigned to finance category. He can go to say it is part of HR category. 
and he can select the reason let's say it was a wrong category selected by the person and then he can reassign it to the correct person so whosoever all the, are the admins under the new categories all their names will pop up here and he can reassign and now what happens is that everything which happens in the system right uh okay, so here for everything there is a log being maintained here if you see closure request sent by this person request submitted then assigned to this person and after that it is reassigned to this person if you see just now this is the time right 136 pm june 17th the entire log is being maintained here for everything that is happening the log is maintained here and the second thing which we do well as compared to other players in the market is we give you these kind of analytics so again legal entity wise for the filters that that, that is for the time filters that you select system will tell you what are what are your over number of overall number of tickets what is the average frt frt stands for first response time then tat sla breaches so if you see it tells you month wise uh, 100 tickets have been created 80 has been closed and 20 in 20 tickets the sla has been breached right this is again important data it tells you your category wise data which is the category where you are getting let's say the maximum number of tickets right uh, so that you can take corrective action because you do not want a lot of tickets so even it tells you graph wise every month these many tickets are getting here so if you know if it is related to form 16 you will probably see the spike around may june july it means there is some problem with your communication mm. right that people have to raise this mm. so you need to find out maybe different ways like say faqs are not working no worries so you say i will go to my echo module right i will put whatever i want to write regarding faqs and or sorry regarding form 16 when it will be given and then i can uh, pin this message on the top so every time someone logs in this is the first message they see boss your form 16 will be given to you by 30th of june do not raise tickets do not send mails and all right it's all your purpose hmm. so these kind of things and similarly and by the other back end uh, um uh, may this like how's the communication happening with them on emails right for every ticket there's there's an email going in that's correct so they have to come in and see this there is a ticket going on to alumni and for the employer there sorry there is a email going to the alumni and for the employer there is email as well as something called my pending tasks got it hmm. yeah and, and the same goes for the members as well who are your top performing individual admins i remember this again as part during my sales process in hr tech companies people used to ask me ki we need this kpi at least who is doing well can this directly be linked to your performance management module can it automatically go as a kpi remember people used to ask this thing mm. yeah so wait right. so that's the reason we developed this here <laughs> so this is there uh, and i want to show you one couple of very interesting things here see we wanted this solution to be like entirely self sufficient and when i say entirely self sufficient ranak i mean it not like you have seen a lot of products within hr tech when they say this is self sufficient but then you have to take the services of this company that service that company to make changes to your system or to setting it or to, to set it up this is a six months process right we all have been through that situation here if you tell me to set up this system for even a 10000 employee organization without integrations i think we can do it within 15 days and that's it and everything will be done from here will be like we don't have any separate login access which is there with only us and it is not there with the client no it is the same login access in fact the employer will have to go to members and add a member with our email id and using and give us like a super admin access with that email id we will be setting up the entire system and then they can disable the access completely everything done from here and and some of the small things for example email templates we really re typically have to rely on the other team like the vendor right they will be setting it up all the email templates from their back end correct and there are there are limitations on those email templates also if you see here this is the email which will go when you activate the account of any alum you can put in your subject you can come and upload any logo here you want to put anything at the top you want to upload an image or you do not like this persona at all right you say hey i want to divide it into multiple columns you can divide it into multiple columns you need a button somewhere you need some text somewhere you just you need to upload an image just use these things and you can create your own template after creating a template preview it how will it look like on a laptop in a 1280 resolution how will it look like on an ipad how will it look like on a mobile change keep on changing the resolutions see this 
so while these are like small small things but as i said we we wanted to give a superlative user experience right so all these small small things we have done and yeah it takes time to develop these things so we have taken that pain to develop these things right from day one itself it's lovely diraj if you look at uh, options like for example whenever an email goes while well, the email will always go from no reply at the red boomerangs dot ai but what should be the display name like for example if you take example of uh, infosys you want it to be like infosys illumina network just come and type it. the mails will go with the display name as infosys illumina network that's it don't have to go back to your vendor and say hey change our display name which is the case with everyone in the market right now you uh, I, i showed you the landing page as an illumina when you log in what is the landing page that landing page is completely created from here if you want to make changes to that landing page you can come and make it here if you want to upload a new image you want to put a text for this on the banner what should be the text color what should be the text size if you want a button here what should be the button color button size once i click on the button what should be the link should it be opening in the same tab or the new tab everything is defined here So the idea is while we set it up for you one time tomorrow if you want to make minor changes uh you can do it from here your chairman changes your md changes your ceo changes you want to upload a new photo you don't need to come back to us just come go here click here and upload a new photo you want to change the message anyway the text is written here change the message change the font color everything that you want right so the idea is idea is again at a scale the way we foresee this system is once it is implemented and once the integrations are done with your hrms system and your ats system you don't have to come to the system to do anything unless it's a ticket or if you want to view certain analytics like what employee what alum works in which company apart from that you don't need to come to the system it will be working in an auto mode got it dheeraj so cool dheeraj uh, thanks thanks for this for the demo i run i want to share share one more thing here i sorry i am taking one more minute uh, this is very important for your audience while i talked about a lot of problems uh, initially in the market how we are solving that one very important problem which i didn't highlight i wanted to wait till the end is the pricing problem look at it this way if you are let's say a 7 or 8 years old organization your alumni base is significantly higher than your employee base so one of the reasons people do not invest money in illumina management system is boss hamara illumina is ka size to badhta hi jayega hamesha how will we keep on making these recurring payments and this is a this is how the pricing of all the illumina systems work in the market so this was again a major problem that we had to solve if we wanted to democratize the illumina system or we want from 1% can we at least go to 10% illumina penetration rate over the next 5 years or 6 years so we came up with a very interesting pricing strategy our strategy goes as follow that all the older alumni of the organization are brought on to our platform free of cost so for example if you sign a contract with me today any employees whose last working date is before the contract signing date he is brought on to the platform free of cost be 10000 20000 30000 40000 alumni and that's how we have done it for our existing customers one customer there are 15000 alumni we are not charging it because if there is no alumni base on day 1 then your referrals won't work then the messaging that you want to do that will not work right so that is what we wanted to do and if you start charging for this older alumni then people are like last 5 years ka karte hain last 6 years ka karte hain and a lot of good alumni are left out of it second is after the system is implemented any new alum which is brought on to the platform we charge only 1000 rupees per alum one time so if in a year you have 100 exits we are only charging you 1 lakh rupees that year next year if you have zero exits you have to pay zero rupee so that's how things work mm. if you do not want to work with us let's say after 3 years or 4 years no worries you can still continue using the system you can still continue engaging the existing alumni tickets everything will be available the only thing which is taken out is you cannot upload new alumni so that's how our pricing model work we believe this is very very important to democratize the alumni management system Hmm. Well, that makes sense uh, because the power is in the alumni, yeah. right? And, and makes sense that that you want to you want to have that alumni. Once you have that database, yeah. uh, you can do a lot of things on it. Uh, cool, uh, Dheeraj. I I um, 
again uh, i want to give as much value to folks who are listening in and uh, i'm sure like people people get it right, right people get that this is useful but uh, i'll give you i'll give you a tough question and uh, how would you how would you take this for for those listening in uh, let's say someone is very convinced right uh, be it your tool be it something they want to do whatever it is right? we are we are talking of the whole alumni world uh, they want they want to get an alumni tool on board right but roi that the dreaded three letters in in our world they have to explain the roi to let's say the ceo or the finance head or whoever it is right uh, given that you have sold you have been in sales for so long right how would what is the tips and tricks that you would have for somebody uh, to sort of position uh, their roi conversation with their their business heads right so that they get a green light from them see roi for an employer there are two parts to roi tangible and non tangible i will talk about both the things let's first talk about tangible the tangible roi will come from two things one is alumni referral and another will be boomerang hires every organization already has a concept of employee referral so they know the money that is being saved from employee referral right they simply have to do the calculations that let's say in one year or two years we are targeting 15% referrals coming from the alumni management that's it whatever money you are saving from employee referral let's say 25% are coming from alumni employee referrals simply divide by 25 multiply by 15 so that tells you the benefits or the gains which will be from this particular platform that is one second is boomerang hires boomerang hires your cost is nil even if you are getting 5% of the boomerang hires take the average ctc of an employee in your organization multiply it with 0.05 so that's a, that's the second thing which goes into your numerator right so i have defined the numerator denominator is the money that you spend on this that also i have told you whatever your exits are in a year multiplied by probably a thousand right in a year not the previous exits so it's very easy to calculate the roi this is a tangible roi a non tangible roi which i talked in terms of brand advocacy and all those things alumni recommendation all those things you cannot quantify them but i personally follow a very simple metric and entities on the conservative side whatever tangible roi you are getting multiplied by 1.2 that's your overall roi so that includes both tangible and intangible benefits got it got it so that is helpful that's uh, uh, and it's also helpful because when you put it in pure numbers when you put it in pure math yeah. right, uh, the leaders get it the leaders always deal with math great dheera ja uh, like i said these conversations go on and i'm sure we could have gone on much longer but uh, as as just a closing um, where where do people find you do you want to share some sort of uh, where do people find you where do people find boomerangs how do they reach out to you yeah thank you very much that's very important uh, so everyone listening we are available on www.boomerangs.ai we have a linkedin page by the same name boomerangs.ai or look out for me dheeraj aruda you will find me on the linkedin so please reach out to us either via linkedin or through our website we would love to show you the love to show you our product demo great cool dheeraj uh, thank you thank you for coming on this was lovely thank you for sharing uh, what the alumni world is all about uh, thank you for sharing that roi and of course your product it's an amazing product and and uh, hopefully right it's this i know the larger problem that you're solving in a long long term it's going to be very net positive right because you hit hit correct problems in the head hmm. uh, and 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 i i hope the listeners listening in just got a quick glimpse of how tech can actually solve real problems right uh, how tech can leverage these and uh, thank you thank you for coming on dheeraj thanks for sharing it's great having you on thank you very much rana i loved our conversation and uh, it also reminds me that uh, we need to meet or catch up more often and have <laughs> some of more uh, more of these conversations once again thank you very much for inviting me rana and thank you for the lovely audience yeah. lovely good cool.